Hey, everybody. Welcome one and all to the Slightly Warped Podcast. I'm Rick, joined as always by Big Show. Show, how's it going? Uh, it's going good now. <laughs> yes, and if you guys didn't know... technical difficulties. Not only is it technical difficulties, but I guess today is where your company logo on your polo shirt day. <laughs> um, how was your weekend? I'm trying, to, I'm trying to duck it down so you can't see it. Uh, it was okay. Nothing, nothing exciting happened. Yeah, you know what? I, I've I've come to terms with it, you know, because we always ask the age old question at work, you know, Friday when we're leaving. Hey, what are you doing this weekend? What are you doing? I'm a boring person. I'm not doing anything. I'm going to watch TV, probably take a few naps, clean up around the house, start it all over again the next day. I mean, yep. that's usually my weekends. You know, you asked me 30 years ago, yeah, we might have been partying all weekend, but not in a mirror. No, not even a little bit. I can't even hang some nights. Some nights I start watching something, and before I know it, I wake up and it's gone off and something else is on. So I'm old, bro. Ooh, I'm with Speaking you. Speaking of old, I'm probably going to cut this off uh, here in the next couple of days or cut it like shorter. Complete, like completely? Oh, no. I, I, I'll never be baby smooth again. I'm, I'm, I, that's not me. I'm going to keep something looking, up there. I was just looking at mine going, man, I need to go get this trimmed up. Yeah, I'll, I'll trim it down. I'm not cutting it all the way off. Never. Um, my job doesn't really care. You know, I just want to, you know, be a little bit more professional. Right. Um, but uh, no, it's it's not coming completely off. I think my wife asked me to do that one time. <laughs> I came out the bathroom. She kind of giggled. I'm like, okay, never again. Right. Yeah. You, you forget what your face looks like when you're there. And that was her thing. She was always asking, you know, I don't remember where your chin is. Just go like this. Yeah, you don't need to know. Right. My chin ain't important. She know what that beard do. Okay. Um, right. Before we, you know, get canceled, <laughs> let me get to the uh, heart of the matter. So you and I have been talking. Uh, about a couple things and i'm gonna start off all right did you did you get that picture of them statues that i sent you i did well not statues it was one statue but uh yeah, if i'm correct it uh yeah had different angles on there this is the new version of the um what was it venus de milo mm -hmm. okay for a modern world Obviously, breasts are augmented. Um, there that, is. Somebody, I'm gonna have a picture of the original. <laughs> Wonder who the model was. Mm -hmm. uh, surgical scars. There are. Um, um, what do they call that? Uh, C-section scars. Yeah, C-section scar. Uh, a, a little uh, fat or whatever it is. So you like? So you like? Thank you. That's the word I was looking for. Okay. So, oh, and just you know, to make it modern, she's doing a selfie on a phone. Yes. This is the ancient OnlyFans statue. Yeah, yeah. You know, two hundred years from now, somebody's gonna look at it and be like, "What's she holding?" Yeah. Yeah, you don't get it, kid. Um, Man, remember when cell phones were that small or that big? <laughs> Probably would be like 200 years from now. But there is so much to take out of this. Uh, when you just look at the scars alone, okay, and I'm assuming that those are for uh, augmentation surgical scars based on the direction of the cuts and, and the scarring. We already do see the C-section scar, which, you know, I know a lot of women opt for it in order to uh, try their best to keep their waistline after having children. It used to just be an option if you couldn't uh, have a vaginal um, birth. So, yes, 
this in comparison to the original Venus uh, does show where we are as a society. It, it does show the truth. You know, I am so glad that, you know, all the quote unquote imperfections were put on this piece of art because that does show where we are now. It does show the one of the types of women that we like. And it also shows not only why, but what women are willing to do to become that. You have any takeaways from this? I think, I mean, yes, it's, it's art, but I think it's a sad display of what the world has come to. Um, you know, I think this is a, uh, you know, I think the artist also had kind of like a, you know, it's a smack in the face of our modern day culture as well. Yeah, and I think that iPhone or whatever phone that she's holding to do the selfie shows it Ooh. best. Yeah. I'm willing to do all this just so that y'all can see me like this. Right. Because, you know, first and foremost, she's not clothed. So, you know, whatever happened to, you know, dignity and privacy? Man, that's out the window. Women, you know, are only fans is, is uh, raising our younger generation. You know, those girls, because they're saying they can make, you know, hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars, you know, just to put your pictures out there on the internet that will never go away, you know, that your grandchildren will see, your great, great grandchildren will see, you know. Um, Sad, too. It is. And teach their own. I'm not knocking anybody that doesn't. Uh, but there is a ripple effect and a consequence for a reaction and choice that you make. You and I, them, you know. It, it uh, it also flows pretty seamlessly into um, where I'm getting ready to go. Because I sent you uh, a repost and it, it was, uh, I believe, a Taylor Swift song or lyrics to a song. And I'm like, so this is what she's singing about, huh? And uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and put that up here, too, so that we can see it. I mean, there's, people there's, see quite it. A f there's quite a few of them, I believe. Yes, sir. Um, it says, parents know what your kids are listening to. Here are a few samples of the lyrics from Taylor Swift's new album. So, you know, this is just one album here. Uh, one song is called Guilty of Sin. What if I roll the stone away? They're going to crucify me anyway. What if the way you hold me is actually what's holy? If I, if long suffering uh, propriety is what they want from me, they don't know how you've haunted me so stunningly. I choose you and me religiously. Yeah, there's a lot you can just pick apart from that alone. Uh, another song says the the smallest man who ever lived. I would have died in. I would have died for your sins. Instead, I just died inside. Yeah, I have a problem with that lyric. Um, but daddy, I love him. I just learned these people only raise you to cage you. Sarah's and Hannah's in their Sunday best, excuse me, Sunday best, clutching their pearls, sighing, what a mess. I just learned these people tried to save you because they hate you. Pick that one apart. Um, the other one, God save the most judgmental creeps who say they want what's best for me, sanctimoniously performing soliloquies I'll never see, thinking it can change the beat of my heart when he touches me and counteract the chemistry and undo the destiny you ain't gotta pray for me me and my wild boy and all of this joy if all you want is a uh, gray for me then it's just white noise and it's just my choice yada 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 and and by the by if you are a christian swift yeah, excuse me, that, that's not her lyrics. This is, and by and by the by, if you are a Christian, Swift and her ilk are out of bounds for you. 
Selah. Okay. I think she meant to say, and by the way. But... Yeah, I, th I think so, too. Um, How quick can you look something up and pull it on here? The moment you get it for me. Just, like, type in uh, devil or uh, uh, devil worshippers look-alike or something like that. Because I think the, the main, I forget his name, uh, who had the who had a church of Satan, his daughter and Taylor Swift are right, they look identical. Zena LeVay? Yeah, 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 yeah. Antoine LeVay, that's her dad. He okay. he actually uh he actually was a head of the Church of Satan. Hmm. And yeah, you know, his daughter and her are I mean Interesting. You know, then you go, you know, not saying that it that it's true or whatever, but you know, uh, the, them them lyrics, uh, you know, that we just read, leads you down a path that, you know, as a believer, uh, yeah, in Christ, I, that, and look, that that's I, not. I don't listen to her music at all, but and I'm not trying to knock her for people that do. But I am going to say this. Most artists, not just picking on her, I'm, I'm talking about other artists too. They try so hard to be individual or to be different that they go off the deep end. They 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 go out of bounds. They They try too hard by either exploiting something that they shouldn't or crossing into territory that they shouldn't. And, you know, for, for, and for years, people have, you know, associated love with, you know, heaven. It must be heaven being with you. Yada, yada, yada. I get that. But there's a line that you shouldn't cross. I am not going to compare the person that I love to Jesus himself. I love my wife with all my heart, but she's not God. And that's just the way I feel about it. I agree. Uh, can you put that picture of Taylor Swift back up the one at the end of those uh, lyrics? I sure can. Uh, yeah. I uh, wish you, I wish you could. Uh, I wish you could see the 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 whole picture on the one on the left, because there's a lot of uh, backwards meaning in. Uh, just the way she's she dressed herself there. What do you take away from it? Well, this you know this is where okay. I mean, keep you ask me. I'm gonna go out on that on that ice. That that's what ice that's what this show's there. all about. Okay, so. My my understanding of who Satan is, okay, mm -hmm. he was the angel of music and had the best singing voice or the best talent of any musician ever known to man. And he thought he was so talented that he should be worshipped in the same way as God. God obviously disagreed with him cast him out and a few of his followers that wanted, you know, that thought he was just as willing or just as worthy of the worship that we give God. He was cast out. So in any music, Satan has his hand in it. In my humble opinion. The problem is back when we were young, we're kids. It wasn't necessarily in your face. You had to do a little digging. Right. Okay. Um, I remember uh, my mother, uh, you know, we, back in the early 80s, we lived in Emporia, Kansas, went to a church, and they had a, had a guest preacher come on and had a whole backwards masking uh, service, which is, you know, uh, basically hidden meanings in music. You know, you play this the one record forward, it says one thing, you play it backwards, it says something completely different. 
and it's pretty obvious, you know, like one of the easier ones that I remember, you know, another one bites the dust. Everybody remembers that song, you know, but mm -hmm. you play it backwards. It says it's fun to smoke marijuana. Clear as day. Um, but like the, the group Kiss, uh, it's from what I was told, it stands for Knights or Kings in Satan's service. And if you look at a lot of their uh, their music, their lyrics, their pictures, back in the days when we were growing up, they were they were there, but you you really had to look at it. Nowadays, you don't have to look; it's right there in your face, and they don't try to hide it, and they don't freaking care. And we, as Christians or whatever, it, it, it's not just Taylor Swift. I mean, all the issues with P Diddy, uh, R Kelly. All of that's on the same line, uh, you know, that we're dealing with. Um, it's very scary, in my opinion. Um, I mean, but we could we could have a super long uh, show about evidence after evidence after evidence. And, you know, people that are watching, I, you know, if you don't believe me, I mean, I'm no expert in it. This is just things that I look into. But like YouTube, uh, you know. Satan in, in music industry. And, mm -hmm. you know, you'll hear things like Beyonce talking about her alternate persona. I think it's what uh, Sasha Fierce. And they have videos of when she's on stage and then all of a sudden her face really truly does contort. And it looks like, you know, for just a glimpse, it's a demon face taking over her 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 physical body. Uh, uh, Nicki Minaj is another one that, that has that. Um, oh, who's who's the K Katy Perry? She's another one uh, that has things out there on video. There's a um, who who's uh, what is his name? He's been around for years. Not Eric Clapton. Dylan. Bob Dylan. Still alive, still kicking, 275 years old, however old he is. But there's an interview of him where he says, you know, you know, how do you keep making music? He goes, well, you know, a long time ago, I made a deal with the guy, you know. Well, what guy? You know, the guy that's in charge of the hereafter. You know, he blatantly telling you, I, I signed my soul to the devil. You know, all those things we see in TV and shows that, you know, where, you know, you sold your soul. That shit's real. That shit is real. I yeah. may be just a just a dumb fat white dude that believes everything he sees. I, I that could be it too. But I believe if I believe God is real and all powerful, I gotta believe Satan has some juice as well. I was about to say that too. I mean, it it if you just look at it logically, just logically, like you said, yes, if you believe in God, you have to believe in Satan. There's no two ways about it. Um and, and to that point. I'm going to piggyback off of what you said earlier about people nowadays are just putting it out there. Society has become more fearless with its loose morality. And uh, yes, these last five, 10 years, more and more people will just do anything. It's not like it hasn't been going on, you know, just like we talked about, you know, a couple shows back with the uh, serial killer. This kind of stuff has been going on for years too. It's just out there now more. You know, we're in that age where you can put this stuff out there and people are so desensitized to it that they write it off. Oh, that's just it, Kanye acting like Kanye or, you know, something like that. Uh, who's the little black girl that uh, had the red hair looking like little orphan Andy that was at the uh, Ice Super Spice. Bowl? Who? Ice Spice. Okay, whatever her name was, yeah. Um same same way um mm -hmm. and we could probably name some more we probably write about some we're probably wrong about some that's not really the point that we're trying to get to we're not really trying to put names out there and say well this person's a devil worshiper no we're just trying to you know put the awareness out there and i know that a lot of parents don't pay attention to what their child is listening to. Yeah, I know you hear all the curse words 
and you probably get upset about that or whatever, or you write it off too. But listen to the content. If you listen more to the content, I guarantee you a lot of these songs with curse words are more tame than a lot of these songs that are suggestive that don't have any curse words. Yeah, I agree. I, it, it, like I said, it, it's just the, you know, the old saying of whatever you do in the dark will come into the light eventually, you know, nowadays they're just keeping it out in the light. They don't care. We're this, this country is a modern day Sodom and Gomorrah. It, it just is. And, it's sad. There's Very more. Sad. It's it appears there are more of them than there are of us. And part of that is because those of us are just keeping too quiet about it instead of you know speaking out about it. Right. And you know what? I like you said. I'm not saying any of those people I named are worshiping the devil. I'm not saying any of that. However. The signs that you see, you know, there is evidence here. You know, if we had to put this in front of a jury, you know, uh, there's reasonable doubt that it is possible that, you know, they, they, they possibly are. Put it to you like this. You know, we have our football teams. Mm -hmm. If you're wearing red and you've got an arrowhead on your cap, I'm going to assume you're a Chiefs fan. Mm -hmm. If I'm wearing black, and I got a big fat medallion with the Raiders logo on there, you're going to assume I'm a Raiders fan, right? If I'm I've got fan, yeah. on all black and I've got an upside down cross on, what are you going to assume? Right. You know, you can't, can't really get around that. I mean, too many people write that kind of stuff off though, but what do I know? And I'm just comparing and, and like this, you know, and we're not really going to, nitpick those lyrics uh, you know but just looking at some of the words you know like you know whatever she's talking about in that song where she's comparing herself to the tomb of jesus you know um being crucified i mean come on now yeah yeah I, and again not saying she is or isn't anything it's a, but it's a smack in the face it's a poor choice of uh words for your lyrics and if you're supposed to be this talented person, you can come up with something better. Do better. Be better. But is it, but it, say, say that last part again. You said it's what, what, what the lyrics, you called it what? No, I, I just said if, if you had choice you, of lyrics or something. Yeah, yeah. If that's your choice of lyrics. I mean, who says it was a bad choice? Obviously, it was on purpose. Yeah, yeah. You know, just like you and I have no qualms talking about our faith, they obviously have no qualms talking about or showing, singing. And, about and it their doesn't help that as they come up and get bigger and more powerful, the people that are coming up with them continue to encourage it or let it slide, whichever way you want to look at it. And you can call them entourages, management. You can give it whatever name you want. The people around the people. And, and that's anybody, uh, especially these big name celebrities. And I don't care if you pick a celebrity that doesn't have an entourage. They've got somebody around them, a friend, a family member, somebody close to them. And they either keep them in line or they do what most of them do and they uh, let stuff slide because I want you to stay as popular as possible because I'm feeding off of that too. And, and that's what a lot of it comes to. And every celebrity has an entourage. Yeah, whether they say they do or not, they, they yeah, do. Yeah, they all do. And I'm, you, you, somebody's probably, no, man, such and such doesn't have, well, he's got one or two people around him that you don't know because they're not in the public eye, but they're mm -hmm. there. All right, before yeah, we go on to the I next agree. thing, I do want to take a second to tell everybody, make sure that you uh, leave us a comment and let us know what you think about this. Are we right? Are we wrong? You know, voice your opinion too. 
you can email us at the slightly warped podcast at yahoo.com. Or if you're listening on a podcast feed or watching it on YouTube, should be a comment section there too. Drop me a comment. I don't care what format it is. Uh, I listen and look at everything and, you know, I want to hear what you think. So let us know. Now show another yes, controversial topic. Um, black athletes and white women. I I'm going to play this TikTok because there's, there's so many ways I can cut this up, but there's so much I want to say about it. Let me just, let me get to the TikTok first and we'll go from there. And after we watch this, then I want your feedback. Why are all these black college athletes that are getting drafted having white women? What's going on? I am going to tell you, as someone that is friends with a lot of D1 football players and D1 basketball players, I'm going to tell you because they have told me. Whoa, 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 whoa. Before I get into this, I want to make it clear I'm only into black women. I'm just telling you what they have told me. My man said, bro, how many white women have you seen do the Meg Thee Stallion Challenge? And he said, excluding the ones that think they're two shades away from being Lotto. I said, probably only one. He said, okay. Yo, five of my guys that play on Division One Power Five football teams and they start, they were like, goody, you know the type of NIL deals we got. One of my men said, bro, I was messing with this black girl. She heard about the deal I got and started to request money, Apple Pays and Cash Apps for her hair and nails. I said, oh shit. My other friends were saying, bro, I would try to take her out to Chipotle, Cava, this and this and that. She would get mad talking about why are we going to steakhouses? You're good for it. I said, oh shit. They were like, bro, the white women, they're down to go and get a cup of coffee, go, go and get some fucking ice cream. My friends were like, bro, the white women we're dating, they pay for a lot of our stuff. I said, what do you mean? They said, bro, they know that we're making some money, but while we're at practice or we're at camp, they got us our favorite Cava bowl, double chicken, right? Waiting for them to come out of practice. My friends are telling me these girls are getting their group projects done, getting their essays done, online tests done, on time. I said, wait, what? I said, bro, what about maintenance? There's no way y'all are not paying for her hair, nails, bags, her lifestyle. He said, bro, first of all, my girl will get her own Starbucks and even get me one. But if I want to be nice, I'll get her something, you know, from Starbucks. And they were like, hair and nails? They don't even care about the nails, really, you know? And if they do it, they do it themselves. Sometimes I, you know, I pitch in and I was like, all right, what about hair? They were like, bro, she's white. She just brushes it. We're flat arms it. She wants to be special. Jesus Christ, you guys are saving a lot of money. <laughs> one of my men said this, he just got drafted. He said, bro, I was dating a black girl. Now I'm dating a white girl. I'm about to marry her. He said, the difference between the black girl and the white girl, the biggest difference is the white girl knows when to shut the fuck up. I said, God damn. Listen, this is what they told me. Do with the information as you please. If it takes me 10 to 15 years to find a black woman that's compatible with me, that's what I'm going to do. But this is what they told me. So stop being surprised. I, I want to hear you take away from this because I'm, I'm not even going to lie to you. This is probably going to be controversy, but there's some truth to what he says. And then there's not. First of all, I don't care what color guy the, or girl that guy's waiting on a date. I mean, he made sure we knew that he ain't with no snow bunnies. <laughs> you know, he made, he made sure that. Uh, so I kind of already look at that in a different, in a different light. Uh, I mean, I really don't have a dog in the fight on this conversation. Um, I mean, I grew up in interracial family, uh, I mean, uh, normal for me. So, um, I think everything that he said is a stereotypical, um, response to, um, society's views on those particular issues. That's, that's my personal take. Um, I don't think that one is better than the other. I mean, it's the it's the person, it's the personality. Uh, you know, I've I've met some crazy black chicks and I've met some crazy white chicks. So I mean, it's just it's the person. It, it's it's not the color of the skin that makes them crazy or sane or whatever. You have hit the nail on the head when you said stereotypical that 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 okay I, i'm i'm gonna break it down F first of all yeah him putting it out there oh i only date black women okay dude you're limiting yourself you should just date women women period 
Um, he, he said he'd wait however long it takes to find a black woman that he will marry. You should find a woman that you will marry. It shouldn't be about race. And yes, full disclosure for people watching that don't know, my wife is white. And also, she's my second wife. I was formerly married to a black woman. And we didn't divorce because she was black. That had nothing to do with it. The reason why I put it out there is because there isn't a difference. And if you want to look for one, let me quote JJ from Good Times episode 47. We all black when the lights go out. Period. That That's all there is to it. True. Um, it, it just... It boggles my mind that this is an issue. And, and and furthermore, if we talk about the Division I athletes that he knows that are with these white women that were with black women that got turned off by the way they're acting, you got yourself a hood rat that was acting a fool. Go out there and find you a dignified woman, regardless of color. I mean... If you don't want to spend money on somebody who needs, you know, $100 a week hairdressers, there are black women out there that don't need your money. There are black women out there that take care of their own things. There are black women out there that will take care of you while you are at practice. And if you don't see that kind of person on your campus, look for a woman. If she happens to be white, hey, may joy go with you and peace behind you. Because that's what it's all about. You should be looking for somebody that loves you, that you love, period. Race should never enter the conversation. It just shouldn't. If I limited myself, I would never be with somebody who goes the distance for me, takes care of me, does what I want to do, sees eye to eye with me, somebody that we on this level and we grow together. You know, I didn't, uh, every man wants that, but I wasn't looking for a color for that. And neither should he or anybody else. Look, I'm going to knock him for having his preferences. You know, if if that's your preference, then by all means, it's okay. But when you're talking about a racial issue and then clarifying the right. preference, that's where um, I already look at it from a different viewpoint than just coming at it straightforward, in, in my humble opinion. I mean, I true don't care, um, you know, what color the girl is or woman, lady, whoever. Uh, you know, if I was a single man, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't limit myself. Uh, right. You know, and love is love, regardless of color. Well said. I can't, uh, I can't put it a different way because that's the truth. Love is love. Um, but I think everything that he said was stereotypical. And yeah, that's uh, why there not, are some truths to what he said, but that's because yeah, we fall into that I mean, stereotype. There's a famous picture, well, famous, I say infamous picture of Russell Wilson when he was drafted to the Seahawks. And his girlfriend at the time thought she had hit the jackpot. You know, and she was a white girl. And he's a black guy, for those people who don't know who Russell Wilson is. And soon after he signed and got his contract, he dumped her, started dating Sierra. <laughs> and been married to Sierra ever since. So... He dumped a white chick for a black girl. I mean, it's just a scenario of the opposite, you know, of what the other gentleman was saying. I yeah, I, and, and I'm sure there are numerous others that you know aren't in the public yeah. eye like that. And I guarantee all them white girls that are dating in D ones or whatever, they looking at the money too. It, they're just not necessarily blatantly putting it out there like the other ones that they that they've come across. I mean, how can you not? How can you not see it? Right, right. And again, who cares? Who really truly cares who they're dating and why? I mean, 
for trips. If she's willing to go the distance for you and you're willing to go the distance for him, I mean, for her, for her, damn. You hit the jackpot, bro. Don't care what color she is. You hit the jackpot. So love is love. Don't care what the color is. That's right. All right. Before we get out of here, this is y'all's last chance for today. Leave us a line. Let us know what you think about this subject as well. Uh, do you have a preference? Do you have any experiences, good, bad, or indifferent, with someone from an opposite race or the same race? Let us know. Uh, again, that's the Slightly Warped Podcast at yahoo.com or whatever feed you're on, whether it be YouTube or podcast feed. Leave a comment on there, and I will do my best to respond to all comments. Show. Now, real quickly before we head out. As I was going to ask you if you had anything. I have to ask you a question. Because you're a Raider fan, okay? Yes. This is this is new water for us Chief fans, okay? You're a Raider fan, and you always have them them subs and stuff to play for your team. Did you just see what come across the, the sports headline news about Rasheed Rice? Oh, uh, no, I, I have not. Fill me in. So he has been in, involved in that speeding thing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, a month or so back where he's playing. He's now being charged with assault in a nightclub in Dallas on a gentleman. Okay. First things first. And, 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 you know, this is to clarify for everybody out there. It is not just a Raider thing. It's an NFL <laughs> thing. The that, Raiders, that was just in jest. Yeah, the Raiders just happened to get picked up on it uh, first because, you know, we have a history with, you know, hip-hop and street and everything. So that that's that's all that is. Secondly, it says Rice is a suspect in an alleged assault that injured a man at a nightclub, and the, the police told the Dallas Morning News. The best thing y'all can do is give him his papers. That's the best thing y'all can do. I mean, it's a strike too. Listen, you've won Super Bowls without him. It's well, not well, like it's Mahomes well, doing that. And we just won the one with him this past year. It, uh, yeah. Must be the last name. Because didn't that running back with the last name Rice kick the hell out of his girlfriend on the elevator? Played for the Ravens? I believe his last name was Rice. Was it Ray Rice or something like that? Ray Rice. Yeah. 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 I mean, you know, I guess the only good Rice to come out of college was Jerry and, you know. Yeah, I think I think you know. Realistically speaking, the team has to do something, whatever that something is. Uh, obviously, the question you have to ask yourself. Obviously, this is all alleged. So there's. So what I've what I've heard is that this whole thing with the with the car wreck and all that, mm -hmm. he won't even be he won't even be. Uh, punished until the following year because it's, that's how long it's going to take to go through the court system. Yeah, And the NFL Players Association won't allow him to be punished by the NFL until after his court stuff is through the, the litigation. Yeah. yeah. But I, I with that. this, it's like what do you do? Well, see, that's what I'm asking. It's alleged. It's not, it's not, it's not fact yet. You know, and and I know I said, you know, as, as a Raider fan, I'm going to tell you, hey, y'all should give him his walking papers. But the true why question is. Y'all would sign him 30 minutes after he came on waivers. I mean, so what's. The we we have our that? receivers. We're good. And, yeah. And, um, But seriously, though, when does the controversy exceed the talent? When do you when do you cut the cord? I mean, depending on said action, I say right away. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be upset as a as a Chiefs fan if they if they got rid of him. I mean, it is what it is. Problem is, is that if we get rid of him, somebody else is going to pick him up, aka Kareem Hunt. You know, who a few years ago there was video of him pushing the chick or something. I don't think he actually kicked her. Maybe he did. He lied to the Chiefs. They cut him. He got suspended, and then the Browns picked him up. He's been playing for the Browns ever since. Right. So, I mean, 
he's not the the, per, the person is not really learning anything. You know what I mean? Because uh, he's still allowed to to do. Yeah. Like I guarantee, you, if I did some shit like that for a company, they're not going to continue to let me have a desk. They're not exactly. I mean, we always talk about. We, we live in a day and age where dot, dot, dot. And unfortunately, when it comes to the NFL, we live in a day and age where um, who was the receiver for Tampa Bay that acted a damn fool, used to play for Pittsburgh? Antonio Brown. Huh? Antonio Brown. Yeah. Antonio Clown. He, he kept getting on teams and was a cancer. Yeah. And he, he ran through, what, four teams, five teams before, you know, he's finally out of the league. Pittsburgh, what, what? Oakland, Pittsburgh, Oakland, New England, and then and then Tampa. Tampa Bay. Yeah, he couldn't. I mean, Tom Brady couldn't keep him in control. Yeah, I almost. On said the he side had... note, on the side note, if you guys haven't watched that that roast on, on Tom Brady on Netflix, you should watch it. That that is old school comedy back at its finest, and uh, like I died laughing. On a lot of them, there's you know Randy Moss. He came out, did his roast. It wasn't really that funny, but the majority of them were hilarious, old school, like we remember when we were young. And uh, at the I end, didn't think Tom Bill Brady Belichick had it in him. Uh, you know me neither, but you know I didn't think he was going to show up until he did because he wasn't there on the beginning. So, uh, but I like you know Tom Brady roasting the Chiefs at the end. I thought that was kind of funny, uh, but you know. I, I, if you haven't seen it, by all means, you should go see it or watch it on Netflix. It, it's worth three some odd hours of the roast. Yeah, good stuff. Even Kardashian brung it. She did, but she got man, she got booed. Yeah, yeah, she did. But she had she had some jokes. She had some jokes. All right. Well, guys, thanks for uh, tuning in to another one. We uh, appreciate everybody's support. If you're on YouTube, yeah. please like, share, subscribe. We got more coming. More, more, more. Yay. And uh hit, and hit that little bell icon at the top so when we post, you can uh, you get notified when it's on there. Yeah, what he said. All right, big show, take us on out of here. Well, again, thank you guys for watching. We appreciate you guys. Uh tell your friends, uh, tell your enemies about us. You know, we don't care. Just tell somebody. Sp spread spread the slightly warped podcast like they used to spread the gospel. And, and on uh, that note, sure tell... go ahead. Oh, uh, I was gonna say on that note, stay positive, stay blessed. Be sure to tell somebody that you love uh, that you love. Well, it's not a promise. See you next week. And if you Good don't love, love anybody, just hit me up in the comments. Tell me you love me. That's right. Get all Find the love I can get. <laughs> all right, later, everybody.